Hello, my name is Paul Miners and welcome to another one of my pipe drive training videos. Now, over the years, I've had the pleasure of working with hundreds of different businesses, big and small, and I've helped them to set up pipe drive and use it within their sales process. Unfortunately, I've seen time and time again the same mistakes coming up over and over, and new users in particular often fall into a, a bit of a trap with Pipedrive in terms of how they use it, and if, they, and if you don't use this tool correctly, it can set you up for failure down the road, particularly around reporting when you're trying to get useful data out of Pipedrive. So in today's video, I'm going to be highlighting some of the most common mistakes that I see people make with Pipedrive. If you have any questions on anything I've said in this video, please feel free to leave me a comment below. And if you would like one-on-one -on -one support with setting up Pipedrive, optimizing it for your business, automating your sales process, and training your team, then have a look in the description below to learn more about my Pipedrive consulting services. Now, the first mistake I see people make is in their pipeline setup. So I have just a simple sales pipeline here. You can see I've got stages for where qualified leads come in. We make contact, arrange a meeting, define their needs, send a proposal or quote, and then we send a contract. Fairly typical, simple sales process. And then what I see some people do is they add a stage at the end for one and another one for lost. And so what people do is they use these stages as a way of saying, right, when this deal, when I win the deal. And so what people do is they, they use these stages to basically show the deals that they've won or lost. And so, and, and the reason I think people do this is they are hesitant to actually use the won and lost buttons on the deal. Because if I click this one button, if you watch what happens, so I've marked this as one now, I go back to my pipeline, you see the deal has disappeared. Now, technically, it's still on the pipeline. It's just not visible because my view options only show me deals that are assigned to me that are open. If I actually look at all one deals, here I can see that deal that I just that I just won. So it's still on the pipeline. It's just not immediately visible due to the view options that I've set up. Now, the reason this is an issue with these one and lost stages is if you're not actually clicking that button, so let's go back to this one here, if you're not clicking this uh, this one button, then when you look at your reports, if I go to insights here, you're never gonna report any revenue in Pipedrive. So I have a, a report here that's showing deals one, and let's just remove that filter there. So this is showing revenue and, and, and when I've won different deals. Now this is showing any deal won last year. If I don't click that one button, this that deal will not contribute or count towards this revenue report. So that's the first kind of major issue is if you never win a deal, you're never going to be able to report on any revenue. It's the same with losing a deal as well. One of the useful reports in your account is that you can report on your deal conversion, so your overall conversion rate, and you can show deals lost uh, by reason as well. So let's look at... Uh, Let's go last year. So I can see the number of deals that I lost and I can report on the reason they were lost as well if it was a wouldn't respond or bad timing. So again, if I'm not clicking that lost button, this report will never show anything. So that's the first uh, sort of common pitfall or mistake to avoid is don't, let's get rid of that, don't use a won and lost stage. Let's delete those now. Instead, we want to use a one, the won and lost buttons on the actual deal. The next common mistake that people make is they create duplicates by mistake. Now, if you already have a lot of duplicates in your account and you need help cleaning those up, I recently made a video showing how to deal with duplicates, so I'll link that in this video here. But how to avoid creating duplicates in the first place is uh, when you uh, are creating a deal, the mistake that I see people make is they type a name of a contact person trying to create this deal for an existing contact, and instead of selecting this contact, they accidentally create a new one instead of choosing the contact from that drop-down menu. And so now uh, I've created a new one. It's actually warning me here, similar person already exists. So I can review this and I can link to that existing contact there. Um, but if you're not careful, it is very easy to just create a new one uh, by mistake, either here through manual input or through a data import as well. So just something very very, very um, simple to be aware of. I've seen people time and time again make this mistake and uh, it really kind of adds a lot of mess in your account. 
The next really big mistake that I see almost everyone make. This is what this is a this is one of the big ones, and it's the one that I really try and uh, help people get over. Is not using activities and not using them properly. So the best practice with PipeDrive when I look at a deal is I should have some kind of activity telling me what I need to do next. So here's an activity uh, telling me I have to make a call today and I have to follow up with this lead. And so what I would do is, you know, when I call this person, I will edit this activity and I can record my notes in here, discuss project goals, and then I will mark this as done. And then PipeDrive will actually pop up this window to say, okay, what do you need to do next? So now that I've had this call, maybe I need to um, create a quote uh, and let's just do that tomorrow. And so my recommendation is always to always have some kind of activity reminding you what you need to do next. Even once you've, uh, you know, maybe once I've got to this proposal sent stage, I've sent my quote now. Um, you can see I've actually used some automation there to automatically schedule follow-up emails. And so this is one of the really useful things you can do with uh, with workflow automation. So now I've got three follow-up activities have automatically been created. So even though the ball is in the client's court, you know, they have this quote or proposal, they're now reviewing it. I still want to have an activity scheduled on my end to remind me when to follow up. Otherwise, it's very easy to forget about the lead and this person's going to fall through the cracks and I'm going to lose the sale. So that's the first thing is, Always remember to have at least one activity scheduled on your deals. When you look at the deal overview, you'll see this little green icon. This is going to show any deal with an activity due today. Uh, the gray ones signify deals with activities scheduled in the future. These red ones, these are actually deals with activities that are overdue. So this was due earlier today. I had another one here. This was due three weeks ago. So I really want to avoid ever seeing any red icons on this screen. So this one here, I should, I should maybe schedule that for tomorrow and I'll catch up with that tomorrow. That way I can get rid of the red one. And then this yellow one, this is telling me this is a deal with no activity at all. So again, this is a deal that's probably going to fall through the cracks because I don't have anything reminding me what to do next. So I'll schedule an activity to give it, drop an email later today. So keep an eye on your deal page for any red or yellow warnings, because those are the deals that um, have overdue or no activity scheduled at all. The final point I'll make on activities is to work from the activities screen. So one, not so much mistake, but I suppose way I see people use Pipedrive that I don't think is very effective is they come to their deal screen and they just kind of scan down this list and try and work out what to do next. I think it's much more effective to work from your activities view. So if you followed my advice, if you have an activity scheduled on every single deal, every day you simply go to your activities. I'm making sure that I'm looking at my activities here and I'm, I'm on the today view. I could look at this week if I wanted, but I'm just gonna keep it on, uh, focused on what I need to do today. And then I will just start running down this list. And so once I, if I wanna take a look at a deal, I'll click on it. I can then do my day one follow-up. Oh, that's actually not a great example. So the day five, now I'll schedule for five days away. Let's put it over there. So as I'm completing one activity, I'm scheduling my next follow-up or my next touch point, you know, later this week or next week. So my advice is use the activity screen here to kind of drive your behavior and use the, use the activities as reminders of what you need to do and when within Pipedrive. Okay, another very common mistake I see people make in their account setup is in the company settings is with the lost reasons. Now, a lot of people will turn on this option here, allow free form lost reasons in addition to predefined options. Yes. I mean, Pipedrive has given us this option. So with that free form entry option turned on, when I click the lost button, I don't have to pick one of my options on the list. I can now pick other and I can type anything I want in here. What's wrong with that? The reason this is an issue is if I allow the free form entry of lost reasons, when I generate a report a bit like this, so I can see here a deal is lost over time, and I've segmented here by lost reason. So I can look at any month and see how many, how many deals were lost because of uh, the client didn't respond, they went with a different option, timing wasn't right. I've got a really clean report. Um, now, if I enable this option, allow freeform entry of loss reasons, 
that's going to allow me and my sales team to type in anything I want. So it's going to mean that this report is going to get really messy with all these unique, obscure reasons that we maybe only use once or twice. So that's why I recommend keeping this turned off. Instead, define a really clear list of, of all the common reasons why a deal would not be won. So either client doesn't respond, pricing issue, they go with another option, bad timing, maybe there's even just no specified reason, even having that. But forcing you and your team to pick one of those is going to mean that this deal lost report is going to be a lot cleaner and easier to interpret compared to if you have all these random little reasons. The final really common mistake that I see people make with Pipedrive is in the calendar integration. So in my personal preferences here under the calendar sync, I've connected my Google Calendar. You can connect a Microsoft 365 account if you like. And we have a one-way or a two-way sync option. Now, what one-way sync is, is if I create activities in Pipedrive, I can have those sync to my Google Calendar. And so that's what I've done. In fact, I'm not even syncing everything. For example, if I schedule an email, I don't need to see that on my calendar. Um, I've only chosen to sync presentations, calls, creating proposals, meetings, only a couple of activities that I need to see on my calendar. And that's how I would recommend setting it up. What a lot of people do is they use two-way sync. So what that's going to do is, as well as syncing activities from Pipedrive to your calendar, two-way sync is gonna look at your calendar and it's gonna pull in all of your calendar appointments into Pipedrive. And so you will actually see those on your activities. And the purpose of this feature is so that you can then see a complete picture of your time. You've got your calendar here in Pipedrive. Now, that's fine, but the mistake that people make is when they, they'll, you'll see a calendar entry like this. It'll be something like, you know, meeting Paul and Tim. There we go. So that's, that's an example of something that was created in my Google Calendar and Pipedrive kind of pulled it in. And so I'm seeing it here in my Pipedrive Calendar. That's fine. The mistake that people make is that they don't actually mark these as complete. And it's totally understandable because it's not really intuitive to mark a calendar entry as complete. We don't normally have to do that. But because of the way Pipedrive imports those calendar events, it actually creates an activity and, and an activity needs to be completed. Otherwise, what you end up have happening is, if I go back to my list view, you end up with hundreds or thousands of overdue activities. I've actually just cleaned mine up, but if you don't mark those calendar events as complete, you end up with all your old calendar, calendar events just sitting there overdue. And so it makes it look like you're behind on all this work when really you're not, you just didn't mark your calendar appointment as done. So your options are either you can do what I do. I like to just keep it simple. I, I use Google Calendar as my calendar. I don't use the Pipedrive calendar. And I sync specific activities to my Google Calendar. That's what I would recommend. If you do want to use the two-way sync and you do want to use the actual Pipedrive calendar, then something to just be aware of is that you will need to be marking those activities as complete once you finish that calendar appointment. Otherwise, you're just going to have a big buildup of overdue activities. So I hope this video has been useful. If you follow my advice and you avoid these common pitfalls, I really think you'll get a lot more out of Pipedrive and it will be a lot easier to use. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave me a comment below. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. If you'd like more help with Pipedrive, setting up or optimizing your account, getting more out of the tool and automating more of your sales process, then check out my master Pipedrive program. When you sign up, you'll be able to join twice weekly group calls so that you can connect with me and get help and your questions answered anytime you need support with Pipedrive. Or you can book private one-on-one -on -one consulting sessions with me so that we can take a deep dive into your account, I can show you key features, and I can even conduct group training sessions. And you'll also get access to my online course, which goes into a lot more depth and detail and advanced topics compared to my YouTube videos. So if you really want to master Pipedrive, then sign up today and I'll see you on the inside.